All right, and we're back. Take two podcasts. This is Brian, and I am joined by the Mike McNamara. What's up, Mike? How are you, man? Hey, how we doing? How we doing? Loving it. We're adjusting to new modern times. This is terrific. All of a sudden, Skype and Zoom are like, you know, front of, of everyone's lives right now. It's pretty hilarious. So, no kidding. No kidding. Listen, in the pandemic of everyone being out of work at the moment, my wife's yeah. job is educational software. And she works for Blackboard, which works with tons of colleges. She is yeah. swamped, swamped right now. And I, I don't mean that in a bragatory way, but she's just busier than ever because everybody's using this stuff. It's nuts. All those IT people that you made fun of because they never <laughs> leave the house and they're always just, you know, stuck in their basement doing IT stuff. They're running the world now. They're they're the job that people want. So it's uh, it's pretty amazing how it's all all spun around. But uh yeah, we'll keep adjusting. We'll all keep moving forward. And one way or another, this is going to bring us together more than it's going to uh, pull us apart. So uh, I'm curious to see uh, what lies ahead. And I, I know uh, there are more positive days ahead for sure. Beautiful. Uh, you segued us perfectly into the first film that we're going to talk about of yours because we're talking futuristic. We're talking about new technology, we're talking about IT stuff. And that's going to be this movie, The Replacement. Now, sir, I would be dead honest. I watched it twice. Reason oh, being. Yeah, I jumped on, watched it, was enjoying it. The wife, I brought her up twice already on this interview. Wow. Um, she walks in and she catches like the tail end, the last like minute. And she does one of those, what you watching? And in a good way, like this is instantly piquing my interest. So I said, like, well, sit down. I, I was legit at the last minute. I was a spoiler. You just saw the final scene, but boom, yeah. rewind it and just did a quick back-to-back -back watch. So the replacement, it's available on YouTube and then a couple of other avenues, right? Yep. And uh, yeah, we, I worked, uh, I'm the lead actor in it. I worked uh, with a ton of awesome, awesome people out of Chicago on the film, uh, primarily the writer, director, Sean Miller and uh, lead producer, Nas Khan. Uh, DP was Mike Bove. And yeah, it's on Dust right now, which if you haven't heard of Dust, this is the premier sci-fi platform on YouTube. They have over a million subscribers. Uh, the oh, wow. replacement has had over 500,000 views on Dust. Uh, so a big shout to D Dust. That's amazing. And if you love sci-fi at all, one, you're going to love the hell out of The Replacement. And uh, two, definitely spend some time on Dust because uh, it's, in it's an incredible uh, platform. And definitely these days, when you're looking for stuff to binge, when you're kind of like, I'm, I'm done with Netflix, I've binged everything I want to binge, I got stuck watching a bunch of terrible series I didn't want to watch on Netflix, but I had no other choice. Now go to Dust, check out our sci-fi thriller, The Replacement. It's a 15-minute politically charged sci-fi thriller yeah. that opens with the election of the first clone president, okay? And the uh, this janitor, custodian, who was the original, who donated his DNA to be sure. cloned, uh, has been left in the dust. He's still working the midnight shift, uh, scrubbing toilets at some big corporate building, and his clones have gone on to pretty much take over the country. And as this film opens, his clone, one of his many clones, has been elected president, and he's sitting there mopping the floor, and uh, he's just not too happy about this regime that he unintentionally created, and uh, he decides to do something about it. I loved it, man. It, it, it hooked me immediately. Uh, I thought it was really cool. Now, A, the the tech, the CGI, the green screen, everything was awesome. Like, it was on point. It, it was big blockbuster-esque. I was like, what? I'm watching this on YouTube? This is phenomenal. Not only do all these clones of yourself and the scenes where you're interacting with your clone and then your other clone, but just you had the flying cars and you had the futuristic, you know, where you're swiping of the television trying to figure things. All of it looked fantastic, man. Yeah, we're, we're, we're so fortunate. Uh, one of the premier commercial production and post houses in Chicago and in the country, Cutter Studios and their VFX arm, which is called Flavor, um, they threw down and brought all of their, all their weaponry, their whole A-game uh, to the table and just did an amazing job for us. Um, you know, we had an all-Chicago team and uh, we felt pretty good about the rough cut that, that we had um, that, you know, Sean and Nas and, and our editor, Mike Free, put together. And we just said, you know, we if you're going to do sci-fi, you need 
really kick-ass VFX to take yeah. this thing to elevate it. And um, Craig Duncan, Neil Coe, and the good folks at Cutters were like, let's jump in, let's do it. And then uh, we also had folks from Turncoat Pictures and some other VFX firms that kind of jumped in. If this was, when they say it takes a village, for this film, it took a village. But the cool thing is everyone in the village just kept raising their game. I mean, raising yeah. their game. Myself included. I mean, for me as an actor, that that film that you're going to see, The Replacement, that's the best I got. So, uh, you know, <laughs> and I, you know, you know but sometimes you just say, you know what, that's that's the best I got right there. And some of the other actors, uh, you know, Jeff Gerritsen, Cecily Von Ray, a lot of different actors. I think we all just kind of did our best work in this pressure cooker. And then our DP, Mike Bove, uh, producer Naz Khan, just the locations that she put together the cast and crew she put together, like everyone clicked at the right time and put this whole thing together. And, uh, you know, we shot it in five straight overnights. Really? I don't know if you've ever done anything like that before. No, that's insane. So 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., five straight nights. And the first night was downtown Chicago on a Friday, like a Friday night. No kidding. (laughs) Like, Somehow our producer Daz Khan like got us this big city block in one of the biggest cities in the world. And we're we're just there shooting all these outdoor scenes. And there's there's a huge concert across the street. There's a big fight at a club across the street at nice. like two in the morning. Wow. Some guy got stabbed. Oh, Some okay. Well, stabbed. Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for you know, it's not like we're like, okay, guys, well, I guess we got to shoot this tomorrow. I mean, this is it. And the sun's coming up in two hours. You know, we no kidding. we fought through and just what was crazy about shooting five straight nights overnights is you don't sleep for five straight nights. Sure. And after the first, you, you try to sleep, but it doesn't work. And a, and, a, and a lot of our cast and crew, they work on some of the big TV shows in Chicago. So they would work with us from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And then, like, sleep for an hour and then go to their other job. Oh, wow. wow. And then sleep for an hour or two and then come back to shoot. By the third day, fourth day, you're starting to lose your mind. Like, I believe it. I, pers- I was losing my I'm seeing, like, three of everything. The good news is it works pretty well for this film since yeah. I'm playing a bunch of different characters. And since we, we shot everything pretty much in sequence. So okay. um, Abe... My character, the original, the whole his whole world is is really falling apart as the as the film progresses, and he's trying to hold it together. He's trying to to fight through. But so as his world is falling apart, literally, yeah, <laughs> my mind's falling apart. Everything's kind of falling <laughs> apart. But it, it the the shoot was demanding, but it was exhilarating. And uh, yeah, I know I keep mentioning our producer Naz Khan, but I still. I watched the film and I'm like, I don't know how we pulled that off. And uh, I'm just excited for all you to see, uh, for all you to see it. You're here on YouTube. Um, I'm sure we'll have a link to it, you know, here on the on the podcast. Yeah, yeah Joe Biden does. And uh, I think you guys are gonna love. I think you're gonna love it. And uh, especially today, especially today, it is it, it's futuristic and the future is is coming up pretty quick here. Your your exuberance and your excitement for it is well warranted because I, I can see like all the things you're just talking about. You're answering all like I was wondering if you filmed because original Abe is scruffy, not clean shaven, and then we also get President. So I was wondering like what sequence then you went in. So you did you play President, you play a janitor, you're a bartender, you're a SWAT team member, you're a addict member, and you know all sorts of yeah. roles. And I was like, how much fun did this guy have? filming it and then now you get to do it in a week so it's like boom 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 that that must have been a blast it was so much fun and i mean again the key was we had this team that was so on point like our production designer sarah sharp or even our script supervisor kelsey o'brien everyone was so on point that for me as an actor i was able to just look ahead trust everything see what's in front of me and go because when you're literally in every scene, and in some cases you're in every scene and you're playing four different roles, you you don't have time to be like, oh, is this right? Is that right? Oh, did we set that correctly? Is that kind of, you know what I mean? You just have to say, everything's covered. Our production team is on point. Everybody's awesome. Okay, I just have to focus on literally this target that's in front of me. Because 
what's crazy is some of these scenes, especially uh, the bartender scene and a little bit of the prison scene, I'm our director, Sean Miller, he allowed me to improvise a little bit. We had a really great vibe on set. Well, oh, nice. it's kind of crazy when you're improvising with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, I'm improvising with my clones. And the problem is, so we shoot one take and then maybe I'll improvise some stuff. Well, then you kind of have to keep that all logged. And sure. then once you switch it to the other clone, you have to make sure you do a little improv as that clone to make sure that it matches up with with the improv you did before so it just turns into this you know yeah. kind of a big rubik's cube but the beautiful thing is our team was so on point that you were able to just kind of relish the challenge and dive in and it was uh it was such a wild ride and we're just so grateful that people liked it we're just so grateful that it, you know we got into I think it was over 75 film festivals all over the world. Uh, one best short film at Sci-Fi London, um, Newport Beach, Chicago International. Um, we're at the Cary Film Festival in in Ireland, um, Madrid Sci-Fi, and uh, Nantes Utopiales. Some of these fests I'd never heard of that are some nice. of the biggest, you know, uh, sci-fi film festivals on the planet. And in a lot of cases, they were coming to us because they had heard about it. You know, the folks at Sci-Fi London started kind of spreading the word and it all kind of snowballed. And, um, sure. you know, when you put all, a lot of times you put work in, you put a ton of work in and it doesn't always work out the way you want it to, you know. But with yeah, yeah. the replacement, I think everyone felt like we put a ton of work in and it turned out, you know, really better than we could have imagined. And uh, it just feels good that people are enjoying watching it. Awesome, man. And folks, when you're watching it, and I implore you to watch, hey, it is sci-fi, but it's very real. Like, there wasn't times where I was, like, tripped out, you know, like, oh, this is an episode of Star Trek or Wars or whatever, where you just know you're in a sci-fi world. It felt very real. Everything is happening. And when you're watching Mike perform, buddy, your you're physical man, you're, like, just the bartender scene alone. And I don't want to give a lot away of the film, but original Abe... Very, you know, shoulders shrunk over and slouched and very disheveled. But then bartender Abe has the guns yeah. out and is shaking and everything. And then when you go president Abe, just very straight back and very clean cut. I was like, this guy's nailing it just from head to toe. Absolutely. Really well done. And the recognition you guys are getting is well deserved. I absolutely loved it. And folks, I'm going to put all the show notes and put the link to it. And you got to go check it out. I want to check it out on dust. This dust that you're telling me about as well. Because yeah. it sounds awesome. Sounds really cool. Uh, before and I let you go. Can you give us anything? I know you're holed up and you, and you got like nothing to do like everybody else. So any show recommendation? I think you need to, uh, I think you need to find some comedy. I think you need okay. some comedy in your life. You, you know what? There's a short film that I love. It's a 10 minute short. It's really funny. You'll find it on Vimeo. It's called Craig's Pathetic Freakout. Okay. It's a 10 minute short. You need to go and laugh. Go see okay. that short and just go laugh your ass off. And uh, okay. yeah, other than that, I would, um, there's another thing called Open TV. If you go to OTV.com, they have uh, some, you know, really great diverse programming, some like super snackable six minute episode kind of web series that you won't see anywhere else. You, This is your chance to get beyond Netflix and sure. find some truly original content. So go to Open TV and then just go laugh your ass up and watch Craig's Pathetic Freakout. And then please dig into our sci-fi and uh, take 15 minutes and watch The Replacement. I think you guys are going to love it. Like, I got to get you on the show regularly as your own segment of, like, off the beaten path things. Like, you just I come in, like... We take care of the Netflix and all the mainstream stuff. You got to come on each and every week and just like, all right, here's on open TV. Here's on dust what you should be watching this week and then go watch the replacement after you're done. I got, I got a whole, I got a whole arsenal for you anytime. Beautiful. Mike, Mike McNamara, folks, go check out the replacement, check out his whole catalog stuff. And the next time you got a big project, you're coming back on and we're going to chat about it some more. If that's all right. Would love to. Thanks so much for having me.